All right, welcome back. Uh, we just present the notes. Okay, any questions? Uh, anyone like to share any thoughts, any questions? And I've been talking continuously. Like to share anything? Feel free if you if you would like to share a thought or if you have anything in mind. Uh, feel free if you want to share it. You can go ahead now, please. Okay. All right. So let me just present the notes. Let's get into the next chapter. Okay. The power and the blessings of the cross. Again, we've been talking about this. Uh, the power of the cross breaks the dominion of sin and Satan over our lives. Uh, look at this. It's very important to understand that the power of the cross doesn't cover, doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't cover or it doesn't partially destroy now the power of the cross breaks the dominion of sin and satan over our lives how the moment you and i as believers right we, we become believers we believe in the, the cross we believe in what jesus did for us the dominion that means the authority the rule the reign the power of sin and Satan over our lives has been defeated, right? Yet, the question could be, why is it that so many believers are struggling with sin and, and you know, always in demonic strongholds in their life? It is because, now the work is already done, but what we're doing is we're allowing the enemy to come and work in our lives. person's life doesn't mean the cross is not powerful the power of the cross doesn't diminish it is our responsibility to understand the power of the cross and draw from the power of the cross so how do i do that now the enemy may come and he may say you know for example there's a alcoholic who has become a believer Right. He has said, okay, I've decided that I will break this, you know, this dominion over my life. I've been doing this for the last 20 years. So now he believes, he made a prayer. He said, Jesus, forgive me. I believe in the cross. I believe that you paid the price for me. So thank you for releasing me out of this bondage of alcohol. He prays and he sleeps. The next morning he wakes up. The first thing that comes to his mind is, what about the next drink? Now, it doesn't mean that the power of the cross was there only for that moment. No, he has already prayed. He has already accepted the power of the cross. Now is the time to walk in that dominion, right? To walk in that authority. So what, what would you and I do? We can say, Satan, your dominion of sin is over. It has been destroyed over my life. So, Romans 12, right? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Spirit is new. I've been changed. God has removed that sin nature. So now it's all in the mind. The enemy is coming and attacking my mind. So, Lord, I need to conform my thinking. How do I conform my thinking? I get into God's word. I put on the helmet of salvation. And I think of things of God. I think... I, I I change my um, you know my thought process. Everything is is towards the things of God. I'm reading God's word. I'm ministering. I'm spending time in God's word. Many many a time, people have come and asked me, but that's that's because uh, you know you're at home or you're in full time ministry, right? You only have these things. You know, only opening the Bible the whole day. So what about us who go to work nine to five? I'm at work. I'm in the corporate sector. You have God's word. You have God's word inside of you. You have all you need is one word. <clears throat> they shall overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. That's more than enough to destroy every temptation, to destroy every sin, every scheme, every attack of the enemy. We shall overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word.
the workplace. They don't need them. in this world sorry them right how did jesus walk he walked in dominion he walked in authority over satan you know when he walked on water he proved to the devil i don't go by your laws he took five loaves of bread and two fish he prayed he fed the thousands proved to the devil i, I don't have to listen to what you're saying and right? he proved when the people People who are sick and afflicted with sin and diseases, he, he healed people. When people were possessed, legion, possessed by demons, he just came, the demons came begging. You see that? You see that dominion that Jesus walked in? The authority where the demons themselves said, have you come so early to, you know, to destroy us? Don't do that. Please cast us. The Bible is very interesting. Jesus told them to keep quiet. He told those demons, keep quiet. Don't talk about me. And they kept quiet. You see that authority? That same authority is what has been given to you and me. We live out. If we live our identity in Adam, we live under control of sin and Satan. But if we live our identity out of Christ, we live free from the dominion of sin and Satan. Now, I'm not saying that we will never sin. There will be times, right? But, you know, we will still live in authority. We can go back to God, ask forgiveness, get our life right back in order. Right? Sometimes I have got upset. Uh, you know, my children are writing, they've just finished their final exams. And I said, come on, you need to stop playing. And, you know, I was quite stern. And I said, you need to stop, you know, sit and study. And uh, why is it, and I got upset with them. And after some time, I said, okay, they're children, you know, they, they by nature, they, they know, they want to play. And I felt really bad. And I said, God, I should have got upset. I should have got angry. So I, went, I said, God, forgive me, help me to you know, be more patient with them to understand that they are kids, right? Uh, for us, usually, you know, normally for me, it is, if it's time to study, you study. If it's time to do something else, you do something else. Sometimes there's impunctuality. I, I love, I, I don't like to be late. It's just not in me. Right from the beginning. So it's got to be on time. Uh, so there are times I've gone to places half an hour before. Because in my mind, what if the tire gets punctured, or what if something, what if the car breaks down? At least I can keep the car and you know just rush to the place. At least I can be there on time. So sometimes I'm there half an hour earlier. Um, my family think that I've gone crazy, but it's just it's there in me, right? And sometimes I get upset that others don't do it that the way I want to do it. And so there are things that may come up, right? But then we say, God, help me to live free from this. And there are, there are times when, I'm not saying being punctual, punctual is not important, it's very important. All these are characters that we need uh, to live a godly life. Uh, yet this can take us to an extreme where we may end up sinning. Right? So we, so we can just go back to God, ask forgiveness, and live free from the dominion of sin. We must understand identification. Right? Here's what identification is. Jesus with us in his birth. Now, for example, God the Father, and this is an example, just for you to, you know, I'm just painting a picture. Here. God the Father doesn't know what it is to be hungry. He's not God the Father is not, you know, because he's God, he's creator, he knows everything. But he's not hungry. Now, the moment you tell Jesus, I'm hungry, Jesus understands, he identifies it. Why? Because he was hungry, he lived for, he stayed without food for 40 years. God the Father may not have wept 
this okay this i'm just trying to get a picture for you now jesus wept so when we cry and pray to god jesus identifies with that hey i know how it feels to cry i know that hurt that you're feeling I know how it feels when people mock you, when people, you know, slap you on the face, ridicule you. Jesus identifies with that. Jesus identified with us in his birth so that we could be identified with him in his death. In the mind of God, we were with Jesus on the cross. Some of us, we were not even born. But in the mind of God, we were in Jesus. We were with him on the cross. What happened to Christ on the cross happened to you and me because we were in him. How, how, can, I, how can we understand this? If I've sinned, I must pay the price for my sins. Right? So in the mind of God, this person is a sinner. And as a righteous, just God, I have to punish that sin. But now, after the cross, God is looking at us and he's saying, you were with Jesus on the cross. Although we haven't gone onto the cross, we haven't been nailed on the cross, nothing has even happened to us. But in God's mind, we were on the cross. We have, we have paid the price. But it is Jesus who paid the price for us. We were with him. So here's the fact that we need to drive home. The cross gives us power over sin and Satan, over death. The cross gives us the power. The devil knows when you know the power of the cross. He recognizes it. When you and I walk in that authority, he recognizes it. When we don't walk in the authority of the, you know, the Holy Spirit and the authority of the cross, knowing what the cross has done for us, he begins to manipulate us. He begins to deceive us. If there are doubts, he will increase those doubts. If there is fear, he will increase those fears. If there's unbelief, he'll do as much as he can to increase that unbelief. So what is it that you and I must do? Remember, remember that portion in the scriptures where uh, this mother came and says to Jesus, Jesus, uh, you know, the, my, my, my son, he, he keeps jumping, he's, he's possessed, he keeps jumping into the fire, he keeps trying to kill himself, and many times we've tried to save him, we went to your disciples, but the disciples could not uh you know cast him out cast the demons out and here what does jesus say he says um this kind will only go through fasting and prayer and we must understand the context of that it's very important to understand the context here he's when, when we read through the uh the king james version he says why did you doubt Right? You unbelieving generation. Why did you have, you know, why did you unbelieve? Why, why was there unbelief? He tells the disciples. So here, when he's saying fasting and prayer, it's not like fasting and prayer for uh, removing the demons. He's talking about fasting and prayer to remove the unbelief and fear that is in our life, that's in our hearts. Right? And when we fast and pray, what happens? We are aligning ourselves to the things of God. And so every fear, every unbelief, everything that the enemy, or, or not only the enemy, see, so fear is natural. It just comes from it. It's a natural response. But that's when, when we pray and fast and pray, that unbelief and fear just goes away. It is filled that place of fear and unbelief is filled with God's presence. On the cross, Jesus Christ broke sin's power over our lives. He broke the power of sin. See, as a believer, you and I don't have a 
sinful nature. Right? When we were born, we have a sinful nature. As I said, you don't teach a child to lie. They just know it. They just learn it. That's the sinful nature. Second Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, anyone is in Christ. He's a new creation. The old things have passed away. So this old man, this old sinful nature was nailed and crucified on the cross. Right? Anyone is in Christ. He's a new creation. So what happens when we become believers is this spirit inside of us, the Holy Spirit, the indwelling presence of the, the indwelling spirit comes and this old nature has been removed off. Right? There's, there's no more old nature. It's nailed and crucified to the cross. And now we have a new nature, a new spirit inside of us. The, the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Now that Holy Spirit inside us has the power. You know, what did Jesus say? I'm not leaving you as orphans, but I'm sending the Holy Spirit who will be like me. He will like it is like I am walking with you. Right? So the Holy Spirit enables us to walk over the dominion, the power of sin over our lives. We're no longer slaves to the enemy. Right? That's that's what the old nature is gone. Now it's only here that the changes need to be done. Only in the mind. We have a new man. The spirit, we are new. We are born again. The mind. That's what comes. Romans 6, 6. We must know this. How do we know this? We got to know it. This is what the word says. So now I don't have a sin nature, so I don't have to live in sin. I can go back to the cross and know that I'm righteous and I can live a holy life. You got to reckon this to be true. Now here's the reckon meaning. This is an absolute fact. Now here's where the devil comes in. Remember the devil is the father of lies. What did he say? The cross is, yeah, you know, the cross happened many years ago. Do you still believe that? What have you gained by becoming a believer? What have you gained? You've gained nothing. You've gained, you know, when, when you were living a life of, of uh, sin, there was no problems in your life. You were enjoying yourself. But now you become a believer and then all you have is problems. Or there are challenges that you're facing. Do you think that's all of this is required? And so that's what the enemy does. He tries to mess our thinking up. He tries to, and he did this to Jesus. He quoted Psalms 91, saying, If you throw yourself, it says that he'd send his angels in charge of you to keep you. The devil quoted Psalms 91. Right? So you must reckon. You and I must reckon this to be true. Okay, this is what it is. I may not feel it. There may be hundreds of people or thousands of people around me saying that the cross is just nothing. It's, it's not even true. It's just history. It's not God and all of these things. But you say, you know, you, you reckon it. Remember the man who was born blind? So tell us who, who gave you the eyesight. I told you. A man, a man came, he, he said, he prayed for me. He said, go and wash. I wash. I could see. Then he says, you see the Messiah. In the end, what does the blind man say? See, all that I don't know. One thing I know. I was blind, now I see. That you cannot change. Who, whether he is the Messiah, whether he's a Jew, whether he's a Roman, all of that I don't know. Whether you like him, whether you don't like him, I don't know. But one thing I know, blind man's testimony was beautiful. One thing I know, I never seen anything in my life. I was blind one hour back. Now I can see everything. All the other things is your, your wish, what you feel 
whether he's messiah whether he's a prophet i don't know all that i was blind but now i see this is the approach that we must take jesus died jesus christ died on the cross for me and he broke the power of sin over my life i know it i reckon it i know this is true but you can't uh, you know the, the cross where where is the proof you don't need proof the proof is jesus died christ jesus died on the cross for my sins that's the proof right and we must walk in this you know, not shaking in it when, when we say walk meaning we live out every day in this understanding but very important these three points we must know we must reckon and we must walk it's not enough to just know many apologists of other faiths know about the cross but many of them don't reckon it to be true muslim apologists don't believe they know about the cross but they don't believe it to be true right yes uh, that's why these three go together you know it you know it as you reckon it as absolutely true and we must walk in it okay then on the cross christ jesus annulled satan's power over our lives annulled meaning he he made it nothing emptied it colossians 2 14 and 15 we talked about it right on the cross he destroyed he disarmed the powers of darkness here's what happened on the cross it was just so powerful a man dying on the cross people mocked him ridiculed him spat on him just such a terrible offensive death naked on the cross but in the spiritual all the hordes of hell all of the work of the devil every demon and hell were all sat in shame this grace defeated and they knew that they have been defeated just can you picture that yeah i mean you know sometimes you just so it's so much more just wearing a cross around your neck it is so much more than that it had the lord jesus had has destroyed the devil we must understand that we are winners and we have dominion over satan through the cross so satan has no authority over us except what we permit him to have that is very very important to understand if we open doors in our life right, and we permit the enemy to work in our lives what happens we invite him to come and work and the bible says we are a temple of the holy spirit so we can't sit on the fence we can't say okay i'll do this and i'll do this no. it's not permitted because satan has been destroyed on the cross and you are the temple of the holy spirit how can the holy spirit and say hmm, the works of the enemy work together here Satan has no authority over us. But when we give him place, he will come and work. If we allow jealousy and pride to continue and continue in our life, what will happen? It will continue. It will just keep going on. So we must understand that whatever sometimes you know, if we're walking in pride walking in uh, hatred unforgiveness it is what we have allowed the enemy to can we forgive anyone we can forgive everyone why because forgiveness is what is the the whole basis of the cross is forgiveness jesus is looking at his tormentors and he's saying father forgive them they don't know what they're doing now this is not just a sentence uh, just to fill up some space no, Jesus meant what he said. He's saying, Father, forgive them. Right? And so that's a that's a that's more than enough reason for us to walk in forgiveness. No, but you don't know what he did 
to me. You know, I know of people who have not spoken to their brothers or sisters for over 30 years. They have not spoken to them. Why? Because of the land dispute. So, you know, you think about this. The enemy has caused such a good own blood brothers have not spoken to them. There's hatred to each other. I've spoken to people. They are believers. They come, uh, uh, they're believers that I know from other places. They they have fasting prayer, they have uh, they have life group, they have uh, Sunday morning, every, everything they do. But the moment you talk about this, no, he did this wrong to me. How many years ago? 10 years ago. Or she did this wrong to me. What was supposed to be mine has been gone to them and hatred. Now, who's allowing that? We are allowing that. So, what happens? Satan comes and works. But God is saying, I'll forgive, just as I have forgiven you. Love. Love one another. Right? So, if we allow the enemy to work in our life, he'd be more than happy to you know, come and do his stuff. In our life, but remember that Christ's work has destroyed and annulled Satan's power over our lives. The blessings that flow through Calvary. Oh, what blessings! Just a simple reminder here: the same way we 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 receive all of these blessings by faith. Yeah. The blessings that flow through Calvary, just as how we receive forgiveness of sins through faith in Jesus Christ. All these blessings are for us. Number one, forgiveness of sins and restoration unto God. We ask God for forgiveness. God forgive our sins. He forgives us. He's faithful and just to forgive us. And he restores us unto God. Healing from every sickness and disease. Isaiah 53, we read about it. Right? And we saw that all the, all the price that he paid he took up every sickness on the cross. The doctors have a report. It may be a true report. It's fact. This is a fact. But God has a different report. I say, I don't go by fact. I go by faith. I go by what I want to do. God is bigger than any doctor's report. Uh, I can share of many, many examples. God is bigger than the doctors. Now, I'm not saying the doctors are not important. They're very important. Right? But when you know, I read this, somebody sent this to me. When it, when the situation becomes impossible, then God begins to start working. When a when a sickness or a disease becomes impossible. That's when God begins to start working. I was just hearing this testimony of one elderly gentleman. Uh, this happened in the West where, uh, you know, a man who was, you know, uh, not a believer, but a Christian family and you know, just going to church on Sundays. And uh, one day he was just feeling sick and weary. And so he went to the hospital to get a check. And uh, probably in his early 50s and Doctors did a check on him and said, you are riddled with cancer all across your body, from your neck to your feet. It is you're riddled and it, it is full of, it's entered the bones, it's entered every place. He got probably four or five months. So he went back home. He, he only told his two teenage sons, this is what it is. And just to, to make the testimony shorter, he said, God, I know that I've not been praying. I know that I've not been living a holy life, only go to church on Sundays. Uh, but extend my life. Give me give me life. I will live for you. And, uh, uh, just, just a simple prayer. He probably, he didn't know how to pray. You know, the testimony, he said, I don't know how to pray. And I, just, I just said a few words and I said, God, I know that you can. Uh, heal me, and uh, if you heal me, then uh, uh, I, I'll give my life to you. And just a simple five-minute prayer. He went to sleep. Um, he woke up. He went back to the doctors. Got his, uh, you know, 
whatever the medications and the work to be done. The doctor said we can't do anything now, but we can just give you some medicines um, uh, to help you and all that. But then uh, the doctors, I think, gave him about three or four months. Uh, and after some time, he went back to the doctors and they did another PET scan. The PET scan showed there was not a trace of cancer. Now tell me this. The doctor said he has four or five months. It's gone into his bones. The next PET scan, which is probably which is probably a month or two months later, the doctor said they couldn't find a trace of it. Even the bones were crystal clear. Now who can do this? Who can do this? This it is you think of it. It can only be God. The doctors said to him, eh, there's no explanation for all of this. And God is bigger than any doctor. Jesus can heal us completely. He doesn't need a doctor's prescription. He doesn't need the doctor's report. His report lasts forever. If he decides, it is done. So what Jesus did in his ministry, he cast out devils, he, uh, he did all that he did as a foretaste of what you and I can receive. And we are sanctified by the cross. I'm sure we've all heard this word. Sanctified means we are made holy, we are set apart, we are consecrated. Right? Jesus sanctified himself. Right? Then we have wholeness. Shalom, the word shalom. We saw this in Hebrews 53, 5. Wholeness. Body, mind, spirit, soul, every area we are whole. We have authority and dominion over the enemy. And then we have the blessings of Abraham. Uh, in the covenants, we talked about the blessings of Abraham, right? Uh, Abraham's blessings included righteousness by faith, friendship with God, Financial and material prosperity, healing and wholeness. A lot more, lots more. Right? Uh, all the blessings of Abraham are applicable to us. When God told Abraham, I will bless you. Right? Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 talks about uh, a new covenant. I'm sorry, the, the, all the blessings of, the, of being obedient in the new covenant. Sorry, in the old covenant. Then he says, we have a new covenant, Hebrews 8, 6, a new covenant with better promises, with better blessings. And here's the thing, right? We are applicants to the old, you know, the, the Abrahamic blessings, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28. Now Jesus, through the, through the cross, has, has some greater, better blessings in the new covenant. But remember... There are blessing stealers that we must fight against. Basically, the enemy who will come and try to, you know, try to destroy our faith, try to make us weak and weary. And here's what I'd like to say. Feeling weak, feeling tired, feeling weary is not a sin. By nature, we feel weak, we feel tired. Right? Um, it, it's natural. God understands that. God understands the seasons that we go through. But he expects us to hold on to the covenant blessings, to the covenant of his word, and he expects us to fight. Yes, when we fall down, what does he say? I will lift you up. I will bear you up. And, oh, I, I, was, I was listening to this wonderful, wonderful uh, small portion from Miles Monroe. He was sharing on leadership and he talks about the eagle. And Miles Monroe says this, right? the, all other birds, the eagle is, why is the eagle the king of the bird family? All other birds, when there is a storm, they scatter, they run away, they fly away and find a, find a cave or find a safe place to, to hide themselves from the storm. But it's not so with the eagles. Because what the eagles do 
is the moment they are they see a storm right the eagles have been built differently they have on their neck a bone called a pinion now this bone is used only when eagles are flying high and they're tired and they release that bone and the bone locks in and they just rest their wings right so they're not tired so they when their wings are probably paining or tired from flying and flying they lock that bone and the and the, you see the wings are just straight and uh it's rest here's what the eagles do when the eagles see a storm all the other birds fly away but the eagles wait for the storm and when the storm comes the eagles say it's time to rest so they go into the storm and when they are in the storm they lock that bone and they rest and the wind of the storm releases them higher above the storm higher than the storm it just it just takes them to a higher space and this is such a powerful example i will bear you up with wings like eagles so when you and i face a storm remember we are eagles we don't run away from the storm we go through the storm we rest in the storm and know that god is with us he will rise us up with wings like eagles. We will run and not be weary. So through every storm that we are going in, we can rest and know that God is with us. It's a powerful bird. I love studying about these birds and the lion have so much to share about. But, um, these are wonderful. There's a reason why God chooses these animals. There's a reason why those eagles wait for the storm. They get into the storm they stay still stand still and see the salvation of the lord it's all through the scriptures we see that right um all right so any questions any thoughts uh, as we uh, i think i think we'll stop here uh, get into the next portion uh we'll continue from the next class um we're in chapter hold on, so we've completed chapter 20 19 next class we'll start from chapter 20 from the cross to the throne so uh next class we'll try and complete uh this entire section on the cross and uh post that we'll get into the blood so the blood also we should be able to finish in a couple of uh, uh sections itself right all right so Okay, Andrew is asking for the submission date. Uh, so, Andrew, uh, I purposely didn't put a submission date, but uh, you know you can go ahead and submit it as soon as you can. Maybe by the end of this month should be good, right? But, uh, but please submit it, right? Uh, please submit. So, it's very important to submit your midterm assessment because then I can mark you for that and for your final term. Right? So it's very important to do that. So, please begin to work on it. And once you're done, just send it across to us. Right? All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, have a good weekend. And I'll see you next Friday. God bless you all.